Ooh, that was pretty good. Viva Las Vegas! What else? What's... Viva! Viva Las Vegas! hey Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen. We're here! Woo! Presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card. The debit card that builds credit without the debt. Ladies and gentlemen, get you one. A two <laughs> for your for your mom. Hosts are uh, us. I'm Travis. This is Jason. It's true. Um, first time doing this show out here in the desert. New episodes drop every Wednesday during the NFL season, but we are coming to you on a Thursday because the Super Super Bowl schedules. Uh, it's been for uh, quite a quite a long time now. Yeah, but we are in Vegas, baby. Yeah, subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. To follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. Um, and check out the official fan club at newheightshow.com, also with one S. Jason, uh, why don't you tell everybody uh, what we got coming up? We got another great episode lined up. <laughs> That's right, now two percent is we're going to do Yee-hoo. our Super Bowl preview on this episode right here of the big game, including a special Super Bowl edition of No Dumb Questions that you're going to want to check out. Not right now. And we're also going to talk about my time down in Orlando for the Pro Bowl, including my time at Disney World with my lovely family. Uh, which Gosh, uh, is chaos. So yeah, but first, as always, as always, new news, new news coming in high. Here we go. All right, new news. All right now, new, new heights news. bracket update. How about that? Let's uh, <laughs> let's start this off with some bracket new news. Mm. The entire reason for us doing the best NFL team bracket was to get uh, people to um, vote. Very unbiasedly, very un like not persuaded in any way possible. And we've and accomplished you it completely very well. fucked the we entire have... integrity of this situation. I don't I think I've accomplished exactly what we what you, you wanted to get done. Your argument was that it was going to be Chiefs versus Eagles in the end. And both yeah, the Chiefs and you and persuaded Eagles everyone eliminated. to not do Listen, that. I, I only persuaded I only campaigned for teams that for were underrepresented. Teams. I just wanted voter turnout. Underrepresented? I just wanted voter turnout. The Swifties have this unrealistic infatuation with the, the Chiefs East, and the, Travis Kelsey. What? And they're only voting based on their love for you, not on their vote, their love for the team name. So it wasn't a realistic representation. This is, this is of ridiculous what that you're just throwing everything on the Swifties. I'm I'm listen, the Swifties. You think, you think Chiefs the, Kingdom doesn't listen to the show? All I know is the Bills. Mafia listens to the show because no, they eliminated they, no, the Chiefs. No, they, they, they're and on then, Twitter. They didn't know about it until you started adding everybody in Bill's Mafia on Twitter. Well, I did the same thing with the Broncos, and you guys still beat the Broncos. And I was just trying to get voter turnout. That's You're all. ridiculous. I just wanted people to know about the podcast and to know about the event so that we could have a realistic You vote. didn't want everybody to know about it. That's it. Because you literally put gasoline fluid and table pictures on the internet for Bill's fans to get excited to vote for no, no, Bill's no. fans. I was just... So you were persuading everyone to I vote have for already, Bills fans. I it wasn't already, a fair. We're not getting. I have I'm already said anymore. that I'm going to jump through a flaming table. This is only accelerating the fl- jumping through the flaming table. That was already out there that I was going to do that already. That's nothing new. I was just saying, hey, if you guys do this, I'm going to jump through the table as a sign of victory. I'm not not like a bribery. The elite eight and final four votes in the best NFL team bracket went down uh, over the weekend. And before we get to the final four results, we got to address jason on twitter yes that's right uh jason discarded uh started out um accusing jets jake of trying to skew the election i mean Jet, and the entire time you have been skewing the election no no, no. i'm just trying to do voter turnout (laughs) i was just encouraging people to vote and trying to get bill's mafia to know about it this is just pure this is nothing these are old school political campaign tactics completely within the legalities of campaign Yes, I I respect it. I respect it. Thank you. I think it's uh, (laughs) it's ridiculous. Uh, Jason tweeted, Judge Jake, in effort to skew the results, released uh, these polls while I was distracted at Disney World. That's right. He caught you while you were down having fun with the kids. Truly uh, deplorable, whatever the (laughs) fuck that means. And please, everyone vote based on name only and vote truthfully. We want the winner to be legitimate. Hashtag Bill's Mafia. Well, I knew the Chiefs were already seeing it, so I had to make sure the Bills Mafia saw it. Okay. What about the Steelers? Well, I just wanted to let everybody know. What about the I Vikings? Was endorsing. I was just endorsing. What about the, the overall? You can endorse certain teams. 
I was just endorsing the Steelers because I like the Steelers. You didn't, and you didn't endorse the Steelers. You, I did. You only endorsed the Bills Mafia. No, no. In that matchup, uh, later in the week, I during the Bills and Chiefs I made Elite it clear vote, that my endorsement is for uh, Jason tweeted. If the Bills win this, I swear on Buffalo Bills' legendary reputation, That's I will jump legendary. through a flaming table, skewing the votes. Buffalo Bill. I didn't know a lot about Buffalo Bill. Only thing I know about Marvel. Buffalo Bill is Joe Dirt. Yeah, the skin on the yeah yeah. It, I mean, it puts the lotion on the skin. But that's how legendary the guy was. A serial killer named himself after Buffalo Bill. Please, everyone, <laughs> vote responsibly, Jason. Another tweet. Vote responsibly. A Zippo lighter package <laughs> and a fucking table. Yeah, I don't know how that picture got in there. That must have. Yeah, I just took a screenshot. Yeah, that was in your cart on fucking. Well, yeah, I, Amazon. That's, where, that's where that came they were from. Winning, so I was making sure that I was prepared. Do you one day ship it, or was it Amazon Prime? I just got there by the end of the I day. One eighty seven was a little bit too much for a plastic table, so I didn't well, buy it. But. Unfortunately, you skewed the votes and completely screwed the Chiefs out of winning. So the Bills won fifty three percent of the votes. I think it's a good. I think that's a. We fair. had a final four vote on Monday, and ladies and gentlemen, we now have the final results. That's right, matchup one: Bills versus Steelers. Bills lost because they they didn't get skewed against the Steelers. Well, I actually endorsed the Steelers because I think that the Steelers is the. So best everybody that you're telling people to vote for, no, I, keep listen, winning. I tried. I told everybody I like the Broncos, and they got put. I told you early on, Raiders was one of my favorite teams they got voted out early i don't think that that's true i just think that the bills have a good fan base they knew about the competition they showed up the steelers have a great fan base they knew about the competition they showed up you're ridiculous are what is your favorite name in team sports and in, in, in the nfl in the nfl in, out of this final four let's just go the final four all right what was your favorite name out of those out of the final Chiefs four out of i don't even know who's in the final four bills steelers Eagles, i was saying Vikings. steelers We've said it from the beginning. It's the best name in the NFL. Yeah, it's a good what one. What it represents. I think it, I think it, it hits represent- home for us. But. It hit, it's home because dad worked in the steel mills. Cleveland is a steel town, or was. Not as much as Pittsburgh, but I think it's, you know, U.S. Steel, the people that built this country, blue collar, hard nose, lunch pail. Carnegie. That is football. Yeah. The black and gold looks good. I mean, listen, I'm not saying best fandom. I'm not saying... The team I like to root for the most. I'm just saying that is a great team name. And I am could not be happier that our bracket has them in the finals against the Minnesota Vikings, even though the Eagles probably should have beat the Vikings. But that's all right. Yeah, the Blue Eagles. The Blue Eagles lost to the Purple Vikings. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, if the Steelers win this, you can't tell me that the most deserving team didn't win. That's all I know. (laughs) I don't even know. I don't even know where we're going with this anymore. All, All right. right, Eagles lost to the Vikings. Vikings fifty one percent. Well, um, yeah, and that part of that, I think the Swifties. <laughs> How the f- why the fuck are you blaming all the losses on the? Well, the Swifties got very upset that they they were got accusing- very upset. They don't understand how politics. Work. <laughs> so they got really <laughs> accusational of me manipulating votes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they so, manipulated some votes. So they voted so they, against me. Sounds like they, they knew exactly what they were doing. Listen, I think that, you know, they yeah. didn't vote with their heads and their hearts throughout the whole competition. No one so. did because you wouldn't let them. Bill's Mafia did. I know that. <laughs> so anyways, official championship matchup is between the Steelers and Vikings. The best NFL team name bracket. These are the results throughout. We're going to put this graphic up. I can't see it right now, but I know I know you can. But most importantly... Now that we are down to the final 92 percenters, we will officially reveal what you all have been playing for. That's right. It is time to officially reveal the New Heights Trophy, which Travis has yet to see, which, <laughs> which is also underneath. Which this Travis had also had nothing to do with. Correct. This is all Jason. Listen, we got really excited last year when we saw all the trophies. We. We saw the Lombardi Trophy. You saw the Lombardi Trophy. I didn't even see it. I've seen it before, so I kind of know what it looks like. But you saw it last year. Then Stanley Cup and Larry O'Brien Trophy came to my house. We got to see that firsthand. And it got both of us inspiration as to what would be a great trophy to have for New Heights. We want to keep doing these fan competitions. We want to keep having – we love competition. We like competing against each other. That's what competition means. Not right. Um, (laughs) So we decided to make a trophy that would honor this show and be a good representation of what it stands for. And what more 
could we model this trophy after than everyone's most prized possessions, Travis? Everyone's most prized. Our children! Look at this! The Whoa. golden baby, people! <laughs> Feast your eyes oh my on God. the New Heights Trophy. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, isn't, isn't it glorious? I don't know if it's a he or she. There are not any appendages south of the equator on them or her. So we will not know or disclose that. But either way. That's a thick old baby. It's a thick baby. Little A uh, few facts about the golden baby. Uh, the golden baby is approximately 104 pounds, uh, over four feet tall. This thing is 104 pounds? 104 pounds, yep. It's it's got some. How the fuck did he get it here? It it was a costly expense to get it all the way to Vegas. I'm not gonna lie. Um, They asked if we should make it lighter and smaller, and I declined because I wanted it to be over the top. Uh, It was modeled after my daughter Bennett. Benny. We didn't like the look on its face, and we wanted it to be fatter, so we ended up changing the dimensions to what you see before you. It took over six months to create this bad boy or girl. Yeah. Winners of New Heights competitions will win either the 24 karat gold solo cup that the Beer Bowl comp- Dude, contestants what? won last year. That's right. Oh, this is gnarly. Or um, a miniature version of that, which this will be pretty good. 24 karat gold plated about uh, yay high. I think it's like a, a eight inches. I don't know. Is that about eight inches? Uh, shorten down a little bit. Uh, my inches. This is what we've been waiting to unveil to you guys. This is fucking ridiculous. The base is what they call a perpetual base, Travis, meaning the trophy is not attached to the base. So everybody that wins a New Heights competition will get a plaque into the base. And then once there is no more oh, room nice. to put plaques, nice. we just hang up the base and we put a new base in. So it's Stanley Cupish. As you guys know, uh, one of the first bits we talked about in the show was signing babies. Every winner of a New Heights competition will have the right to sign the baby. Engrave it. Yeah. Eventually, well, it's just going to be Sharpie. I think we we tried to do the engraving. Didn't. Yeah, they said it, they don't know how it's going to work out. So they advised just Sharpie. <laughs> so we're going to do Sharpie, but any only winners are allowed to sign the baby. Dude, this is so massive. Yeah, we'll put up the graphic for the miniature baby. I think I'm leaning, do you want to do, should we do miniature versions of the baby that people can put like on a bookshelf or should we do uh, the solo cup? Just for everyone. The solo cup looks sweet, man. Should we give? Should we put it on a mount though? That yeah, has like the competition. Yeah, yeah, give them a little mount. The miniature golden baby that we made it to the size that this is then like a shot glass, and it's still removable, so you can do like a shot out of it. Oh, well, do that. Do that. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're doing that. That solves that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, dude, this is for all future composition. We want this bad boy or girl or it. Uh, to live forever in um, all of its glory uh, and represent the wonderful 92 percenters. Whoever wins the bracket challenge will that be the first solid. person who will have the right to uh, sign the baby. I have to give a round of applause. You outdid yourself we with did this it one. Good? You, you outdid yourself with this one. I don't one. know what I'm clapping for. This is unbelievable. You're a fan. I am. I'm a fan of it. You you had your, uh, your hesitations going in. I don't, yeah, I still don't think it needs to be 100 pounds. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's cool that it is, though, right? <laughs> No. No? It just makes it harder to move. It's cast bronze. It's cast bronze. It's cast. It's cast. <laughs> Initially, I think it was going to be 150 pounds. We got him to thin it out a little bit. Holy shit. Went on a little bit of a diet. That thing's like a 1970s yeah, it's, car, it, dude. It's, it's half Benny, half... Buddha? I mean, it is Buddha-esque. And who doesn't love a good Buddha, if we're being honest? Not right now. I'll tell you what. The gold looks... Yeah. It's nice. Gosh, that's massive, dude. I'm 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 impressed you guys actually put this Everyone's thing most prized possessions are babies. We gotta give it a name. Right now it's just the golden baby. Golden baby, baby yeah. Is, is that the name? I Should the 92% yeah. percenters come up with the actual let's come Yeah, up. let's take it to the let's take it to a vote. Little fan you, vote. Why don't you skew it? <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but my vote is for the golden <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, we'll vote. Yeah, you guys go ahead and uh, send send us uh some what, some requests or I don't know. Some me neither. They're already <laughs> naming my unowned cat. So, I mean, they'll they'll come up with something without even right. asking for it. We'll leave it up to you guys. <laughs> 92 percenters, do your job, baby. <laughs> All righty. In more new news, we have been nominated for Podcast of the hold Year. Hold on, hold on. You, you got to shout out Kayla. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. So, Jesus. Uh, it's highlighted. Travis is giving me credit. I did nothing. 
I told uh, our wonderful Kayla, what is your official position? I don't even know what to like say. <laughs> intern. Yeah. Intern. <laughs> Another yeah. intern. We can't call her an intern. That's Brandon. Brandon's intern. Right. Kayla. Produce. <laughs> uh, show What's a uh, chief mark CMO? Chief marketing C- nice. officer. Chief marketing uh, yes. CMO. CMO. Uh, Kayla. Uh, she uh, went into great detail to find a company that could produce this vision uh, and communicated back and forth this make what you see before you. Uh, I don't know if we should applaud her or not. You guys be the deciders on that. I'll applaud her. I'll applaud um, her again. I'll applaud her again. More. Say, the same. The same people that make this baby are the same people that make the uh, Concacaf uh, Golden Cup. Concacaf. It's like the North and South America Concacaf. North and South America, uh, like uh, cup that the soccer team split for. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's like a legit. I mean, these guys are good. I mean, I can tell they're it's pretty. Damn, like- they're damn good. But damn, there's a lot of there's some good detail on that thing. Yeah, looks nothing like my niece, but the thing looks good. No, it, I mean we, I don't know, we didn't want it to look too. So. <laughs> I like it's smirk. Wanted more. That's a smirk. I guess I see the smirk yeah, now. You, you got to look. It's kind of, but you can tell. You look close enough. All right, I hot <laughs> radio podcast awards and more new news. We've been nominated for podcast of the year. Best Sports Podcast and Best Overall Ensemble at the 2024 iHeart Radio Podcast Awards. Shout out, as always, to the 92 Percenters for continuing to support the show. Right now, you can vote for us daily for Podcast of the Year through February 18th. And uh, for one special group of fans that have joined the show this year. Bills fans? That's a good point. Bills Mafia has definitely joined the show. (laughs) Um Swifties, we're talking to you right now. Uh, Let's rig this vote, please. This is not for me. This is for Travis. Uh, Please go and vote. (laughs) Please go and vote uh, for the New Heights show as the podcast of the year. We are going to add a link in the show description where you can find uh, where and how to vote um, right on the screen. The full list of nominees for podcast of the year are as follows. Crime Junkie. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. The Daily. That's another. I mean, that's. Those two right That's, there, right now. Daily's pretty serious. Uh, my favorite murder. <laughs> crime favorites? Oh, no, crime no, no, no. pods are favorites. Oh, right Normal now. gossip. I mean, I kind of like big time gossip. On purpose with Jay Shetty. Um, I don't know about that one. Yeah, the, the retrievals. Scamanda. It's like Scam and Amanda. Uh, Smartless. Know that one. Big fan of Smartless. Okay. Uh, wiser Than Me with Julia Luis Dreyfus. <laughs> All right, Elaine. I'll see okay. you. We're in good company if we're even being close to nominated with podcasts. Any of these. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. But well, I don't think any of them have a golden baby. <laughs> 92% is, you know what to do. Yeah. You know what to do. Let's move on. How about Mama Kels on The Price is Right? <laughs> Come on down. All right now. Mama was uh was up there, Vanna Whiten. She was right. up there doing her thing. <laughs> Showing off some brand new cars. Which nobody won. The uh, Super Bowl themed episode of The Price is Right <laughs> this week. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. Mama's up there uh, doing her thing, representing the Kelsey household. And she got to meet Drew Carey. Mm, Cleveland, um, rocks. <laughs> Cleveland rocks! Cleveland rocks! Cleveland rocks! Cleveland rocks! Ohio! Cleveland rocks! <laughs> <laughs> it's electric. The Drew Carey Show, for those of you that don't know that one. Showing our age a bit. Yeah, and we. Uh, what's ironic is that my mom actually took us, we mentioned this before, took us to a Drew Carey Show at the new Brown Stadium when that First was, Energy had just got built. That was the only time we went to the Brown <laughs> the Stadium. Only time, we, yeah. we never went to a game. We went to mu- the Municipal Stadium back in the day, but that was it was shared between the, at the time, Indians and the Browns. It was awesome to experience that day with the uh, Drew Carey Show and then... um. I'm sure it was awesome to kind of go full circle for mom as she uh, she got to meet Drew Carey this uh, over the weekend. No doubt. But most importantly, she got to spin the big wheel. Dude, I'm I got to ask her what it I'm feels jealous. like. I'm jealous. Yeah. That's I haven't talked to her about it yet. I want to know how heavy it is because it looks like it's pretty heavy. Yep. What do you think the big wheel weighs? Is it more than the baby? Dude, I know people, they, people struggle to you get it go like all the up. way around. You, People struggle to get it to go all the way I think around. Somebody's made this joke, but you can imagine somebody like getting caught on one of them. Ra- like you do that, and like the little thing gets caught in your pocket, and then you just get sucked into the. Because they have, they have like. Do they, old, have, like, they have like grandmas on that? on that thing. Is it like one of the you know the saws now that if you like touch your finger, <laughs> grandma's like, Nick gets caught in that thing, just chews her up. <laughs> it's like it's like Final Destination right there. It'll pop her hip out. <laughs> and then once your hip goes, it's 
all downhill from there. <laughs> tuck and roll, Grandma. Yeah. Tuck and roll. Well, the price was wrong because nobody won anything. God, you hate it. You, you love to see winners on the prices it's right. The best. Gosh, you, just... you know who else was on the prices right? Head coach Indianapolis Colts, Shane Steichen. Really? He was. And Bob Did Barker messed up the order. Bob Barker? Yeah. Bob this Barker. This is a while ago. I was about to say, this doesn't. This is previous. Previous. Shane Steichen was on the Went prices on right. on the prices right. This and had Bob to Barker be. Bob Barker got the order wrong, and Shane said, it's not my bid. Because you know, when you go on, your last to bid, or your first to bid, or whatever. There's a particular order. Bob screwed up the order. Shane he corrected. Said, I'm up. No, it's not my bid. It's his bid. He corrected and Bob, Bob said, Barker. I'm running the show. It's your bid. <laughs> And then he and proceeded to get learned. outbid by one dollar. The next bid and lost. <laughs> I, I don't want a piece. I want the whole luggage, thing. Got some free luggage. All right now. Nice. You got some free luggage out of that. I think that's what he told me. That's got to be the most disappointing. He walked away. Who would you win? Ah, to me. Yeah. Some to me luggage. I mean, to me, I mean, it rolls really nice. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. The zippers break a lot though. Do they? I've had I've had some to me's. I've had some to me's break. That's just because you're shoving so much stuff in them. No. No. Uh, and more new news. Travis invented a haircut. That's right. The fuck uh, out of here. Man. Moving on. In hair-related news, it appears the New York Times has credited Travis with inventing the fade. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. The headline of the article reads, they'll take the Travis Kelsey hairdo. That is... <laughs> Not since Jennifer Aniston has a haircut become so popular. Oh Barbers God, in America what? and abroad This is what it said? Listen, I'm just... These are... There's quotes around this. So this isn't even into who random the f- this. Who the this fuck is directly is, from the article. Who is in quotes saying this? The, whoever wrote the New York Times article, which is probably a very legitimate pundit writer. Yeah, I don't know. One, I didn't read one, barber, is- one barber in New Brunswick, Canada said he received at least 50 requests. This is just... They're just quoting one barber. Before that, it says that... It says uh, barbers in America and abroad... So overseas, like not even just America. They're asking for well, the Travis Kelsey overseas. Thanks for whoever wrote this article. Yeah. I had more barbers attack me <laughs> for for not even having anything to do with this. Like, yeah. I didn't want anything to do with this. Listen, and you invented the fate, Travis. No, I didn't. It's I did what, not. What better month to credit a white man with inventing the fade than February? On the first, too. <laughs> Came out on the first. I didn't want anything to do with this. I didn't want anything to do with it. I saw this and I said, no, 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 no. This can't. This no, isn't real. No, this no. isn't true. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, I said this uh, yesterday at the podium. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't invent the fade, but I know where you can get a good one. And that's Patty Cuts, baby. Patty Cuts. Patty Cuts. Shout out Patty Cuts. Shout out to Patty Cuts. Philly native. Mm-hmm. Go birds tatted on them. Yeah, but... um. This is uh, pretty ridiculous, but this this it happens more often than you think. Like I remember last year, Bryce Harper haircut was popular. Um, the Pat Mahomes has been popular in Kansas City amongst kids for what years. What is the Pat Mahomes? It's like half. Mohawk. It's like the it's the Mohawk yeah, to it's, the. It's like a it's like a Mohawk. It's like a frohawk. But it goes all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like. Oh, it's the Patty Mahomes. Yeah, kids get excited. I mean, I remember when we were kids. I wanted my uh, I wanted my hair uh, blonde like uh, Eminem. So mom got the spray that. on. Yeah, the sun, and sun long, if you got, if you stood if you out, stood if, outside long enough, it turned blonde. <laughs> I remember that. Man, the nineties, baby. That was real. Doesn't get any the better, 90s. baby. Was it for Eminem or was it for JT? It was. It was either him or Justin Timberlake. I think it was JT. JT had the sun in. Eminem was like straight, like uh, bleach, right? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. All right, me neither. <laughs> um, the barber they interviewed was quoted as saying that Mr. Kelsey's haircut is a buzz cut fade. Mr. Kelsey's? Mr. Kelsey's. That's your, you're old enough to be Mr. Kelsey now. How about that? A buzz cut fade, it's easy to replicate. It's basically zero on the side until you get to the top. It's a fun, easy haircut that I can do quick in 20 minutes. Okay. Is that accurate, Travis? Is about, does Patty Cuts get it done in 20 minutes? No, Patty Cuts makes sure he's, he's an artist. He's, he's an artist. He's, he's an artist. He's too. He is, yeah. So how, what takes longer, the beard? No, the Dude, hair. what is going on with your beard right now, by the way? We haven't talked about this. We're growing. Baby. It's long. Yeah, we're putting big, in that work. It's, it's, it's going bigger, Yeti. It's been rolling, baby. When's the last time you, you trimmed that thing down? Months? Yeah, it's been before Christmas. Is this your playoff beard? Yeah. Is that an, an, an ode to your hockey roots? My hockey roots. It's also an ode to just like the 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 ups and downs of the season. The you, I just feel like when I, when I look in the mirror, I just feel like 
I don't know. Rugged? Yeah, rugged. Like I've been working for something. Yeah. Like I've been focused on something. Like I've been, I feel I've been working towards getting you look, some shit done. That's a working done. man's beard right there. I've been worried about anything but getting shit done. Yeah. I feel that. And I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. I feel the power of it. You think it gives you power? Like Samson from yeah. the Bible? Yeah. With his hair? Yeah. I've been playing way better since I've been growing it. I mean, your playoff stats have been pretty unreal. There you go. Well, uh, that's about all we have for... Yeah, can you guys stop telling people that I invented the fade? I didn't, all right? I walked in a barbershop one day, didn't even know what I was getting. I didn't invent the fade. Last bit of new news, we have to uh, update on the shirtless Jason Kelsey t-shirts that uh, Homage put together for us. Shirtless Jason Kelsey t-shirts. That's just like a funny thing to say. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Dude, your chest hair on this thing is fucking hilarious. Over 3,000 t-shirts have been sold. And if uh, we've raised over 50,000 for the uh, Patricia Allen Fund, benefiting the John R. Uh, O'Shea Children's Hospital in Buffalo. If you are uh, if you haven't gotten yours yet, please check out homage.com slash new heights. Yep. Got that thing in some Bills Mafia colors, too, just for all you uh, up there in New York, man. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for supporting. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Let's talk sponsors. Okay, cool. You want to talk some sponsors? Let's talk, uh, how about Prize Picks? Love That's it. right. Prize Love Picks it. is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. And with the big game right around the corner, Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into 100x your money. That's 100 Damn. times for those of you just tuning in. With as little as four correct picks, you can earn or turn. $10 into 1000 Want to play alongside some of Price Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill or comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find Community Plays under the Promos tab of the app to view uh, entries from some of the biggest names in the uh, Price Picks community. Uh, and now for the portion of this ad read labeled Personal Experience to be read by talent outside of Travis and Jason Kelsey because we are active NFL players and cannot participate. You're still playing? Well, currently. But you know who can? That's right, our intern Brandon. Get on in here, intern Brandon. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, can I sorry, get sorry, up sorry, first? Sorry, sorry. No, you're good. 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 You got to clear. They're clear. They're legally far enough away. Hey, guys, if you don't know, Pat Mahomes' yards are still discounted. All he needs is one yard for you guys to win. I would also look at potentially a CMC touchdown and an Isaiah Pacheco touchdown, I think are probably great picks for this weekend. But that's all I've got for you. Enjoy the game. Guys. Legally come back on. I have to leave. Get away from my baby! <laughs> so uh, hopefully Brandon did uh, you guys right, and hopefully um, you guys make some money. And if you want to start making picks, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights and use the code new heights uh, for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash new heights, code new heights, for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You've all seen Jason reaping the benefits of AG1 uh, over a year now. And guess what? We've got an extra special offer from the AG1 team to kickstart your journey to optimal health. AG1 has been my go-to for support in five vital areas of health. Energy, immunity, gut health, hormonal and neural support, and of course, healthy aging. AG1 it's like your nutritional insurance. You can count on having your bases covered no matter what your day throws at you. It's not just about feeling good. It's about building a habit that sets you up for good health in the long term. That's right. AG1 is a game changer, trusted by professional teams and endorsed by nutritional staffs nationwide. This Super Bowl season, let AG1 be your seeker weapon. Forget ordinary supplements. AG1 is your powerhouse of essential nutrients. When people ask me for the one product to elevate their health, it is always, most of the time, AG1. And that's why we've been proud partners with them for so long. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D. And uh, for a limited time, you'll get 10 free travel packs at drinkag1.com slash new heights. Don't miss out on this offer. Check it out right now. All right now. All right, it's time now to shout out our next sponsor. Shout out. And it's one that takes us back to our Ohio roots, baby. Ooh. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings beer sports. That's right. There's nothing like watching football at a sports bar. And Buffalo Wild Wings is the sports bar to catch all the action. That's right, Jason. And B-Dubs has everything you could possibly need 
while you watch the game. Everything? Yeah. Whoa. So uh, if I tell you I need wall-to-wall TVs, yeah. wings in any of B-Dubs, 26 sauces and dry rubs, and a great beer selection, you're telling me B-Dubs has all those things. That's pretty specific. And yes, they have those specifically. It's just fun to watch the game at the, at the sports bar with your friends, man. Or you can uh, make new friends when you bond with strangers. Uh, because there's no such thing as stranger danger in the beat ups, um, <laughs> especially when they're rooting for the Chiefs at your local Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings is the place to catch all the big game action. So get to your local Buffalo Wild Wings on Sunday for the big game. Let's go sports bar. All right. Now, as always, 90 percenters, be sure to drink responsibly. All right. Now, uh, we're uh, we're out of the house. Jason, well, I was out of the no, you're still out of the house. I am out you're of the house. You're fucking killing it right now, Dude, man. This is, I feel You haven't been in the I'm house in like a week and a half. Uh, I went to the Pro Bowl last week on Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to get to it. I came back to Philadelphia for less than 24 hours and came straight here to do this with you. Dude, that's electric. And we appreciate you getting out of the house, Jason. This is a wrong. rare sighting of a wild Jason Kelsey out of the house. <laughs> All right, now, before we get to our Super Bowl preview, Jason, uh, <laughs> like we just said, got out of the fucking house. Um, in our favorite segment that is brought to you by our friends at Accelerator Active Energy Drink. And my, oh my, is the cherry ice pop popping right now. Damn, this shit's good. So drink Accelerator Active Energy Drink, and it's available at Hy-Vee, Meyer, and uh, Quick Trip, but also Amazon. You can throw it in your Amazon carts. Jason, you and Kylie and the girls got out of the house and went down to Orlando to the Pro Bowl. We did. Man, I'll tell you what. I saw some of the videos, man. A lot of FOMO, man. A lot of FOMO. I missed Shut out up. on that You're one. In the Super Bowl that so looks so, fl- dude. The giant churros. You're talking about Disney World. Yeah. Oh yeah, Disney World was fun. Yeah. Yeah. We missed you. Yeah, I definitely, was, I, I would have murdered you in that the snapping competition. Snapping, you, we both did use a long snap. Do, used to. You're still uh, the backup long snapper. Yeah. See, I, I got too fat. I can't look. The more you can do, man. And put both my hands over my head anymore, so I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Although I do think. That's most a talent teams, you gotta have at long snap. You most teams be able to look between your legs. Yeah, exactly. Some some dudes can. And I'm not gonna snap. lie. We're gonna get to this. We're some gonna dudes get to can this. blind snap, but not me. Before you got in, into any of the Pro Bowl competitions, you gave us this quote. I don't even know what you do in the Pro Bowl anymore, but it's <laughs> down in Orlando, so I get to take my kids to Walt Disney World. Hey, not off to the Super Bowl, Walt Disney World, but as long as Wyatt gets to see Elsa. I don't think it really matters. So uh, yeah. first and foremost, did Wyatt get to see Elsa? She did. And there are some adorable videos I can't wait to show you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Her, Elliot, and uh, Benny all got to meet Elsa and Anna, as well as a bunch of other characters, Mickey and Minnie. And yeah. They're still at the age where when the characters are right up on them. Terrified. They are terrified. <laughs> but what's... <laughs> Like this like, baby. It is the coolest like thing in the baby. world. That's what I that's what happened when I just saw this fucking if baby Wyatt today. If Wyatt was here and saw that baby, she would shit her pants. <laughs> Which she is fully potty trained now. So that Wyatt, would be come on down. Yeah. It would uh yeah, that would terrify her. I think they're like the 10 foot. At, at, at about 10 foot, they are like on cloud nine. That's the coolest thing ever. Inside of 10 feet, they're like, Daddy, pick me up and hold me right now. <laughs> in particular, uh Anna. Did a great job of warming them up in the little section of Epcot that Anna and Elsa yeah, were yeah. located, and there were some really cool videos and uh, watching the fireworks at Magic Kingdom. Always magical. Something really, about really that cool. castle and the fireworks going off, man. Dude, just... They were. Um, it was the most fun I've seen them have. I love potentially it. their entire lives. I so. love that. Well, that was the FOMO that I had. Yeah. Missing out on that, seeing their smiles we'll go and, back uh, again. and all you guys. The NFL also put out a video of the whole family at Disney. It looks like you uh, and Ellie went on the teacups ride, of course. We did. Well, yep. We went did on the you, teacups. Uh, Wyatt did... still will not go on any rides. It's <sighs> a little scaredy cat. I was like that, though. You didn't go on the rides? I wasn't big on rides when I was little. Oh. I actually, even through high school, I was kind of like, fuck roller coasters. That's weird, because I've always thought that Ellie matched your intensity and kind of looks like you, if we're being honest. Loves when I rides. was a blonde. When I was she like that, is you know. not afraid at rides at all. And um, Did you did you get that thing turning pretty good? So at good, first, or what? we didn't spin it, because I didn't know what a reaction was going to be. Yeah. And then by the end of it, me and dad were like, Cranking it was it. full on. She loved it? Like, we were at the county fair. We were moving that <laughs> Now those are the and she kept looking up and the I mouse remember. kept peeking his head out. Yes, that's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what was the best snack of the day? You know what? Um, I had a foot long hot dog that day. Uh, churro. A foot long hot dog. 
Yeah, a, a, a big HD. A B, BHD. A BHD. <laughs> I had a, also had a Dole Whip. Perhaps the most underrated thing at Disney World. I found this out due to one of our resident Disney experts. Mom was one of them, but then Kylie's uh, family friend, Betsy, mm-hmm. uh, was on the trip with us too. Big Disney person. Love that. She knew right away. Who isn't? <laughs> Magic Kingdom. To go to the uh, oh my god, what are those things called? Dumplings. Is it dumplings or pot oh. stickers? No, uh, uh, spring rolls. Oh, okay, spring rolls. But they had like a cheeseburger spring roll and a a cheeseburger spring roll pizza like pepperoni and cheese spring roll. Dude, it was the best thing I had probably the entire trip. Oh yeah, that's sneaky. I good. could have ate. <sighs> Give us a number. <laughs> eighteen. I could have ate eighteen of those things. And. And not even get phased. Went and got a Dole Whip afterwards. What's the dad hack for taking a family to Disney, Jason? There is no there is no hack. The dad hack is have zero plans going in and just go with what the day is. Nice. Have like one or two things that you got to hit. And outside of that, it's a wild card. Explore. The kids are going to be very unpredictable. Know where your exits are. Know where your restrooms are. And just don't count on anything going according to plan. Know where your exits are. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's and just it's know a plan that, in life occasionally you're going to have to get them as a dad. Part of your job is to snap them out of the, the, the temper tantrums and the bad moods with candy, with candy fun, something right. Yeah. Or discipline. You gotta, it's one of those three. It's either, Hey, and then usually we will leave. Yes. That usually doesn't work, especially with kids that young. They don't give a shit. (laughs) So you got to go straight pretty much to candy or like, Hey, let's play hide and go seek. And then you just run and hide someplace. And then they're like, Oh, where's that at? (laughs) So you got to know, you got to have some strategies built in. I did that one time and dad was like, oh, that's pretty cool what you did there. <laughs> nice Learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's talk some more uh, off the field Pro Bowl action though. Um, love seeing you guys up at Disney World, but uh, it was pretty entertaining watching you be a part of these, uh, these competitions because you, you kind of were competing, but you, you were really just oh, there no, for was, support. No, I was competing. We talking about Kelsey doesn't show up and doesn't compete. We talking about you arrived in Orlando. The Eagles made sure to point out you were uh, you were wearing flip flops. Of course, you don't leave home yeah. without them. I don't um, even know why it's a story at this point. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the dude uh, cardigan. Um, yep, always rocking. Yep. Why do Why do you think people keep making a big deal about you and flip flops? Uh, it's just become a thing now. Um, do you think you, you've had the same pair for what decade now? No, I broke. One pair of them. And they, they, these are really quality sandals, so they lasted for a long time. Yeah. These ones right here are probably two years old, but I had the initial pair before that for easily over. They got they had some miles on them. Yeah, yeah. And then you went out and got the exact same pair. Just same thing. New- same exact pair. Same company. I really like Olakai. I don't know if we're supposed to. I thought that was the True Religion sign. No, nah, Olakai, Hawaiian company. They make uh, sandals in particular, but also other footwear. But they still offer like the arch support in them. So it's not just like a piece of flat, like foam. Yeah. So it feels nice. good. Well, and I think they kind of look nice. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> I just didn't think you cared about them looking nice. That's all. I mean, if if it if it's functional and high quality and it looks good, I'm I'm all for You're it. You're in. All I'm right. In. Okay. All right. Look at Jason. Fashion sense. There were also some great clips of you and the family going around uh, playing with the girls. Man, of course. It's dad time on the field. You uh, sw- swinging the girls around on the field, and uh, it's no meeting Elsa f- uh, from Frozen. But the the girls did have fun out there. You could tell they were oh, laughing they around blessed. and going through the uh, the obstacle courses together. And they still um, got terrified because they saw the mascots, oh, yeah. the dolphin. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Made Wyatt cry on the sideline. Tried to come up to her like, hey, like, dude, do you not realize what's going on right now? She's fucking bawling her eyes out at you. We gotta have better. It was actually really awareness. cool. A lot. I wasn't the only Mascots person. Mascots had to have better awareness. A lot of a lot of the uh, guys had their uh, their kids on the sideline. So, uh, Penne Sewell had his. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was, I don't know if it was his child on the sideline. There there were kids kind of. It was it was a really fun day for the families, no doubt about it. Um, I also got like, I don't know, like orthopedic people keep like responding. You know, like how Uncle Don used to spin us around in circles. Yeah. Like I do the same thing with the girls, but apparently I saw like, it. Their shoulders aren't all the way developed. Yeah, Dad used to say that too. Yeah. How are your shoulders? I mean, they've held up for 13 years in the NFL. I can mind they're still going. Yeah. Hey. 
<laughs> what do those orthopedics know? <laughs> Losers. <laughs> what Soft they read a book? <laughs> they get a lecture on joints. Yeah, Kelsey shoulders. Yeah, just be careful, I guess. Uh, and lastly, before we get into the intense Pro Bowl action, the uh, you guys were competing your tails off. Uh, a security <laughs> guard laughed at you, Jason. That's no, he right. laughed with me. With me. No, nah, he was laughing at you, Jason. You're the better looking brother from a fan in the stands, and the security guard laughed his ass off. Had a grand old time with that line, Listen, it's and um, pretty funny. Thought it was pretty good. Yeah, well, it's pretty funny that. <laughs> You're the sexiest man alive, finally. So, last you got the last. Laugh Jokes on, on you, one. security guard. Yeah, hope he's you're actually it. really nice. He was all yeah. Out. He's probably the prettier brother. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know that joke. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's get serious. Talk about some serious shit that went down on the Pro Bowl. All right. Um, initial thoughts. What did you think about the new uh, Pro Bowl game format? Um, I loved it, and I think more importantly, all the players like all it as players, well. Yeah. Here's my whole thing about something being enjoyable to an audience if the people on the field are Are having fun you already know the audience is having fun i'm with you on that and i think it was evident throughout the week that guys really enjoy doing the different games and activities it's something new it's still a competition but it's not too serious so guys are kind of having fun with it um and then the flag football was surprisingly that was the first time i've honestly watched it in a long time i mean i can't remember the last time i watched flag football um i really enjoyed watching it like it was obviously not the caliber of football that the NFL is, but guys were making the very first drive. Tyreek Hill got the ball in space and was running all over the place like the little Pikachu he is. And he, uh, <laughs> Pikachu, <right. laughs> dude, that, that sums up his energy. Yeah. It, it was, his aura um, for sure. It was a good way to compete, have fun, and still showcase, I think, some of the athleticism and strength, the tug of war, uh, the, the, the gridiron gauntlet, all the games. Uh, they've done a good job of incorporating all that stuff. And I think it's only going to get better as they continue to do it in future years Yeah, and come up with new things. And um, so, what, yeah, what I, all, I really had fun. What, uh, what events did you, did you compete in? So I did the snapshot, which was new this year yep. where they had a bunch of centers do a long snapping drill. I did the gridiron gauntlet. I stood on the sled yep. and I was pushed on that. Off. Yeah. Super hard. And then I had to snap the ball for the flag football. Me and what, they made you snap. I don't know why. I mean, it was completely yeah. pointless. I think. Just, did you have any? Did you? Did you roll I any? Good snap. Well, you, I didn't have to block anybody. I was <laughs> <laughs> easiest freaking job in the world. The hardest thing was being like, okay, what's you didn't this have guy's any three techniques again? to help out. Of this um, yeah, nobody's. I was. I'm actually not allowed to block. They were blitzing. I'm like, yeah, can't touch you. It's against the rules. Sauce Gardner got an interception right in front of me. And I was about to grab the flag. I was like, am I allowed to tackle? Am I even on the field right now? I don't know what the <laughs> rules were really for point. me. Yeah. There was actually Madison from the USA women's flag team. Yeah. The national team. Shout out to Madison. Which, shout out to flag football. is going to be an Olympic sport. Oh, yeah. Not this Olympics, but next Olympics. Yep. USA. Um, she was, USA. <laughs> we're going to dominate that one. I cannot wait. Gosh. We're going to dominate it. Um, I can't wait to see what other countries are going to be in this and what their offense looks like. Right. We're going to kill them. Gonna, it's going to be a bloodbath. These New Zealand all Looking blacks lateral dominate all day. rugby. Can't wait to see what they look like. God. Flag football. <laughs> They're going to be doing their haka straight to the <laughs> bus. All when right. we were out in Hawaii, dude, that. I mean, it's dope. It's pretty it is cool. sweet. It is. It's, it's definitely Enjoy. cooler than, remember the Titans. Ah. <laughs> Strong side, left side. Which never made any sense. I don't Which, get it. What is the left side? Is he just saying the left side is the strong side? Because it was really strong side, weak side, strong side, weak, weak side. side. Yeah. Or like right side, left side. But it wasn't. It was strong side, left, left side. side. And I'm like, what the fuck does this have to do with the strong side? I don't know. We got to get with the. What producers. if the left side is the strong Whoever side? Whoever produced right side that movie side? and wrote that movie, why the fuck was it strong side, left uh, side? Yeah. Can it you get that to us? It never made sense as a football player. I'll tell you what. That George reverse. That motherfucker worked. Who? Oh. The Georgia verse. The Georgia verse. Yeah. All right. Oh, um, the the first Pro Bowl event you took part in was uh, Sunshine was a lead blocker for the game, him. baby. He, he like blocked, your he life blo- depends on. He it. blocked four people on that play. It was unbelievable. It's the best goddamn block I've ever seen in my life. It was like the Water Boy. It, it was the exact same thing. <laughs> water boy. It's almost like one of them took it. The first Pro Bowl event you took part in was uh, called Snapshots, as you just mentioned. Yep. This was more of a long snapping competition. We were snapping to a target that was 13 yards behind us. 
So I reverted back to the technique of I was a long snapper in high school. Travis was actually my long snapper. In high All school. right now. So I still had that technique down. And the first one I did in warm ups, I rifled through the five hole. Right through it. Straight. That through. was yeah. They showed. And that. I was like, whoa! I might be on to something right now. I'm feeling it. Then I single snapped <laughs> on through the five hole. And I'm like, dude, I'm. I'm not and practicing anymore. I was anymore. talking to save these shots. So I was first to go, and I remember. So the NFC and AFC, AFC centers both were in the competition. Yeah. And each of the AFC and NFC's long snappers, long snappers were in the yeah. competition. I was the first one to go the whole competition, and I asked the, the Paulo, our long snapper, I was like, Sh- "What should I like? Just try and get us some points and get on the board as the first off, or like, what should I do?" And he's like, "Man, to be honest, you're pretty good at snapping. I think you might be able to go at the five hole." And I was secretly hoping he was saying that because I wanted to hit a five. Go for the gold, baby. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, so all I needed was the okay for my team. Ball. Hey, go for that five. This is what we're up. This is what we're doing. <laughs> it's either all or nothing, And baby. I started going at it. I was like, man, I, this is way Dude, harder than warm-ups. You, Everybody's looking at me. Oh, and my gosh. I, I I'm think, not going to lie. I started chuckling. Because you could tell you looking between your legs, the getting blood dizzy. was the oh, blood yeah. was going to your head, dude. With each and every, you snap. could tell you started getting a little red every time you would and come up. You would stumble a little bit. Yeah, I was also getting embarrassed. <laughs> Pure panic, and then you hit one and I hit with one. a good guy. I got a good I five one, points. I broke the camera that was back there. Not a boy. The Fire camera left. crew had me sign the camera well, that I broke. The only the only way to get that. I was know, the only one to get you one. You got to shoot it. You got to shoot it. Even when I played hockey, I was a big fan of the five hole. Five hole, right? right? Nutmeg them. Nutmeg. Five hole was hard to hit. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of jabronis, man. I would have been fucking lacing the five hole. I think you would have gotten pretty net. good. It wasn't, dude. I if I hit the five hole, you get in the five hole. I would, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was like, wait, licking my chops, like I would thrive in this competition. Dude, it was fun. It was my I'm kind of lie. competition. Well, the next event uh, we saw you in was something called Gridiron Gauntlet, yep. which is a relay between uh, both conferences um, doing different challenges, uh, woven all throughout it, yep. if that makes sense. And you were a part of the last leg of the relay, really yep. putting uh, your weight into things, standing on the sled, uh, being pushed. So that's how you contributed. Put the old man on there. The least explosive out of uh, the three <laughs> offensive linemen that were up there. Um, and, of course, uh, you guys won. We did. We did. And your strategy. I like the little yeah, the sinking talk, so of the hips. Me and uh, Coach DeMarcus Ware were talking right before the challenge. And I was like, do you think I should, like, like sway with it and, like, hit the backside of it? And he's like, no, no, check this out. And he did exactly that. And I was like, oh, that's that's definitely the strategy. Wow. Okay. And we went into it. I knew I was going to have to do something because I am I think I'm heavier than Miles Garrett. But to be honest, I don't really know. I mean, he's pretty big. That dude's massive. Yeah. It's not that big of a size disadvantage. But I think I'm a little fatter. No. I'm, well, I'm definitely way fatter. But he's no more way. muscular. Dude, you're way more ripped than Miles. Shut up. Dude, don't patronize <laughs> Look me. at you, dude. Hey. Look at those. Those tits are fucking coming right through that t-shirt. Stop. Um, anyways. So I knew I was going to have to do something to try and level the playing field. Uh, I really probably didn't have to do anything, though, because uh, Panay Sewell and Tristan Wirfs, <laughs> that might be one of the... That's probably the best double team you can have in the NFL. I mean, those dudes are big and strong and explosive and fast. Yeah. And mean. Yeah. So... Yes, yeah, probably was exactly why you guys won. And uh, the clip of you uh, giving the uh, strategy of uh, of the of the sled, the yeah. cool running sled. I, I felt like I was saying, Sanka. Sanka, you dead man. Feel the rhythm. Huh. Feel the rhyme. Feel the rhyme. Get on. Uh, what is it? Get together. Uh, it's Bob's Light time. It's definitely not get together. I don't forget over there. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here before we get in trouble. Um, yeah, sure. Dude, the face of on, in this clip, I mean, I know that face. That's the excitement you had when you met the Phillies mascot. It is. That's, That's just that pure face. joy. That's pure excitement. It's pure adrenaline. Adrenaline and dopamine flowing through my face. I love it, man. 2-0 and oh in your events. 2-0. and 2-0. Oh. and oh. The NFC dominated the events. Yes. I don't know the AFC. I don't. It's because I was one or two, but the AFC dominated the game, so it was close. <laughs> the f- actual football portion, of the AFC killed us, but the events is what won the NFC the, uh, the entire competition. You were also part of the flag football game, snapping yeah. like you said, and you said you kind of liked it better than the old format, right? Yeah, of course. I hated the old format. I'm a lineman. Think I enjoyed pass blocking for fun? No, I did not enjoy it. This was great. I snapped the ball and had to do nothing and just watch really athletic guys make ridiculous plays all day it was fantastic nice um how do we get centers more involved in this though i mean 
We got to have at least one down Listen, where all linemen have to be the on the center. Field. I think I speak gotta, for all gotta, centers gotta, in saying that we are perfectly I, fine with the level of involvement we're no, already in. No, no, we need to get you guys out there. There has to be at least one down per drive where you use nothing but offensive linemen. Got to make um, got to make it more interesting. So you want actually the offensive linemen? I think they don't want big guys running plays. They said because the the ball clubs are nervous that the big guys are going to get hurt. I think they just made that up because they didn't want to have to deal with big guys saying, throw me the ball. Yeah, There's no way that the clubs care that much. There's no way. I think everyone loves when the big guys try and do something athletic. Yeah. Everyone loves a thick six. So just give the people what they want. I want to see Tristan Wirfs covering, you know, Toronto Armstead. <laughs> just fucking right? yes. I want to see that. Yes. I want to see who right can win Right now. This. Yeah. I want to, yes. I want to see Sewell and Miles Garrett. In one on one, well, we know. Uh, yeah, I mean, who's mm-hmm. kept? Yeah, that's what I, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sewell's a sneaky athlete. Sneaky? Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing sneaky about that man's athleticism. Not he's not. the biggest. He's like the biggest, fastest, strongest man on the field at all time. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that. I never thought he was that tall until I met him down there. I think it's just because he's so wide on TV, he doesn't look that tall, and then you see him in person, like, oh, not only is he wide, he plays is, with good leverage. He's tall. Yeah. Plays with good leverage. He does. He does. I think this is the first Pro Bowl I've ever won. I've been on like the winning team. I don't, me and Lane were talking about, I don't think we've ever been on the winning team of the Pro Bowl. Is it still, was it still, if whoever won it got the money? Yeah. Gosh. Might be throwing that extra cash down on the roulette <laughs> table. We go a little, I think I'm just going to walk by and put a bet on eight and seven for an honor of my man Travis Kelsey right here. Um, it's me. If you guys didn't know. Every time I, I walk past it. the roulette table, just boom, boom. Black 15. Black 15? Oh, yeah. How many numbers do I got to put the money down on? I, I thought eight and seven was more than. You got to spread, what's, it, what's, what, spread what, it out. What's significant about Black 15? Patty Mahomes. Oh, okay. All right. 13, your favorite number? 13 is my favorite number. Not a bad number to throw it down on. So I should put it down on four numbers? I mean, I guess it's increasing my chances of hitting. Yeah. That's <laughs> the name of the game, baby. It's all actually, about chances. I don't think it Just give me a chance, coach. <laughs> I promise you, if you put it down long, if you put it down enough times, it'll hit. That's that's some Ed Kelsey strategy right there. Kick, kick you right in the nuts. <laughs> All right, that does it for uh, out of the house, Jason. I just want to commend you, man. You are killing it right now. You oh, are out of the you, fucking house I'm out and of my taking over zone. the fucking world right now. Yeah. From the Bills game to right now, you have been fucking killing it. All righty, we need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking all the time during the show, and that's Accelerator (laughs) Active Energy Drink. Can't beat it, baby. And if you've been looking for ways to accelerate your fitness in 2024, uh, look no further than Accelerator Active Energy Drink. This thing will get you in shape and ready to fucking just rip it in the gym. Jason, what's your favorite uh, flavor? My favorite flavor is what I just got done drinking, the cherry limeade. Ooh, I got a little cherry ice pop. Cherry's a big flavor yep. with the accelerators. Accelerator Active Energy has zero sugar, gives you sustained energy, gets your metabolism going, and gives you the enhanced focus you need to accomplish anything. Like maybe play in an NFL game maybe. or take care of three kids and uh, two Irish Wolfhounds. All right, now, plus there's nothing like those uh, signature plant-based thermogenics. Oh, How about that? that uh, they give you uh, the energy you need to record a podcast each and every single week. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is literally... How New Heights is made right here. Pretty much. You can find Accelerator Active Energy Drink at Hy-Vee, Meyer, Quick Trip, and Amazon. It's time to talk about another one of our partners, and that's Seat Geek. That's right. Tired of trying to find the best deal on tickets this football season? Well, Seat Geek is the answer. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. Numero uno. And uh, as a sponsor of New Heights, you know that they had to go big for the big game. All right, now. Uh, SeatGeek is offering $500 off the big game tickets with code KELSEY500. All right, that's right. A $500 discount for all our New Heights 92 percenters. Just go ahead and use code KELSEY500 on SeatGeek. Don't worry, 92 percenters. Everyone is eligible for this discount. It doesn't matter if you've uh, purchased on SeatGeek before. You can still make use of this special offer for the big game. We want to see as many of you rooting for the Chiefs this weekend as possible in Las Vegas. Just use code KELSEY500 on SeatGeek for $500 off tickets to the big game. All right, it's time to talk about our partner. Who? Experian. It's official, Trav. 
The Chiefs have punched their ticket to the big game, and we know better than anybody how much work and preparation it takes to make it to these big moments. Trav, what are you doing differently this week to prepare for the big game? Well, technically, you don't. You never want to do anything different. You know, it's kind of the name of the game. You know, don't let don't let the distractions of festivities uh, get you off your game. You know, so nothing. Yeah, I'm not really Perfect. doing much different Love other it. than uh, just uh, counting how much money I'm spending <laughs> on this damn Super Bowl for family and friends to come. Just making sure I'm on top of those finances and losing all this money. Well, well, if you have the Experian debit card, you can build some credit. All right, now, Experian can help you keep your finances in great shape for all your big moments all year round with the free Experian app. The Experian app is extremely helpful. It has tons of free tools right at your fingertips to help you take control of your credit and your finances. All right, with the uh, free Experian app, you can get your free FICO score and get free access to a whole marketplace of credit card, loan, and insurance options, all matched just for you. You can also boost your FICO score instantly, free, with Experian Boost. So go to the App Store and download the free Experian app now. Experian Boost results will vary. See Experian.com slash boost for details. All right, let's get to the reason why all of you are listening to the show. Uh, Super Bowl preview, that's right. I don't know if you guys know this, but we got a pretty big game ahead of us this week uh, between the two best teams in the NFL. Biggest game of my life. Right. The Chiefs and the 49ers at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. How about Las that? Vegas. How's the uh, prep been feeling all week compared to uh, the last, what, three Super Bowls you guys have played in? Yeah, man, it's exciting. It's yeah. exciting. We're over at the Raiders facility. Everybody over there has uh, kind of made us feel at home and um, helped us out and getting acclimated and everything. And tell you what, man, <laughs> that facility is state of the fucking art. It is that good. That thing is nice. It's what brand up? new, so you would expect it to be absolutely amazing. It's very spacious. Um, got a good weight room and a good indoor, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, got, uh, we've gotten two good days of work in down here so far. Yeah. Um, and just, uh, just grinding, just grinding with all the chaos that's uh, going around, uh, Vegas, uh, in between practices. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a unique week where there's a lot of media and a lot of attention and a lot of things you have to do outside of football. You have to do. Yeah. And it's fun to actually just be in your routine to try and avoid all of the distractions and things that take away from the game. Yeah. What are you guys doing, I guess, to avoid the distractions or to minimize the distractions? Um, I think it's a part of the, uh, the culture and the, uh, the leadership that we already got to kind of make sure we focus on this thing. We got one week, man. If we do what we need to do and we play our game and we find a way to win this game, we could party and have fun in Vegas for the rest of our lives, man. Do you all know? the interviews you want afterwards. Exactly. So it's <laughs> you got to focus on this this game for for what is it five more days now, mm-hmm. and um and that's the biggest focus is that you know let all the all the excitement you know there'll be there'll be plenty of Super Bowls for you to attend for the festivities uh, when you're done playing uh, the game or still know? playing or still playing yeah and uh, <laughs> you know I think uh, everybody's pretty motivated and still locked in on the task at hand and. Um, it's, uh, it's wild being out here in Vegas though. I'll tell you what, what is the news that's happened out of San Fr- is your guys feel good? Yeah, it's awesome. But they're having issues with their field. So they're trying to practice at your guys field. I have no idea. All right. Never mind. Uh, Super Bowl 54 <laughs> rematch. I did hear that they don't like their practice. Yeah. There's, there, I've heard rumors um, about they're upset with the field conditions, but is it, I think where I've heard that before. Uh, it's pretty rare. The Super Bowl usually is a big thing with the grass i think yeah i mean that's always kind of been i mean i you, i just hear coach melvin every single game make sure you got your footing right yeah you know that's why you go out there before practice practice on your side of the field and, and they make specific cleats for it yeah super bowl 54 rematch you guys last played the 49ers four years ago in super bowl 54 down in miami which means that these two teams are probably quite a bit different but are they yeah yeah. yeah um, completely different. Chiefs won 31 Well, at least 20. we are. They, 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 there's, we got, there's familiar faces on both sides. Both sides, yeah. 100%. Their defense has a lot of guys. And the coaches. Well, I guess, do they have a lot of guys? Armstead was there. Armstead. The two linebackers Nick were there. Nick Bosa. Uh, Bosa was obviously Nicholas. there. Yeah, both linebackers. But their DBs, are, like Sherman was still with San Fran. 100%, right? yeah. So their DBs are different. One of their DBs was actually with us, Charverius Ward. Shout out to Mooney. Hey, hey. And then offensively. Um, they got a lot of new pieces, right? Yeah, a lot of new pieces. So, Debo and then you guys and outside Debo of you and, and Pat, how many guys were on that last year? Everybody. Chris Jones? Yeah. 
That's the only three, right? I mean, there's trust there's me. There's more. there's a bunch. Yeah, okay. there's a bunch. Right. Our linebackers, Chris Jones. Your line, Bolton has been on the Chiefs that long. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I thought he was younger than that. Mm -mm. Willie Gay. Yeah, he's younger than that, right? No. Damn. All right. I, I could know. be wrong about all this. <laughs> well, we'll cut it. The out fact that we're wrong. going down this, I'm just all right. Sorry. Like, Anyways, hey. um, so yeah, the teams are different. It's it's a rematch in some ways, but in a lot of ways, these are two completely different teams. Yeah, but. Nonetheless, you guys won the last matchup, 31-20. to 20, And uh, this was your first Super Bowl appearance ever, um, as well as your first Super Bowl victory. Is there more pressure on you guys trying to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls or more pressure on the 49ers to avenge a Super Bowl loss from four years ago? I feel like until you win that, the 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 – I don't know. You just feel the like the pressure, the pressure and, the, and the want and the mm -hmm. desire. And, the, and don't get me wrong, man. I I want this one more than I wanted the first one, I feel like. Yeah. So I feel like it's just however you build it up in your mind. Um, but I feel like, I don't know. I just, for me, it is, uh, it's not as much pressure as it's just exciting for like the challenge at yeah. hand. I, yeah. th I think, uh, you know, I've I've been in a few of these big games, and it's just you know, they're like no other game out there, man. And there's no other there's no other feeling than being on the field, playing, making plays in the Super Bowl. There's just no better feeling, man, than to go out there and find a way to win with your guys. So it's just I'm more excited about the challenge than I am feeling the pressure of trying to go back to back. Even though I want to be a part of the tier of NFL players and NFL teams that have done that. Yeah, I mean, speaking of that, the Chiefs have an opportunity to break the longest stretch of seasons without a repeat champion in the NFL. This is the longest stretch in NFL history that a team has not repeated as Super Bowl winners. Uh, there have been eight repeat winners over the first 39 Super Bowls, but none over the last 18. The last team to do it, obviously, being the 2005 Patriots. Damn. Needless to say, it is hard to repeat a Super Bowl champions, and it takes a special team to do that. You guys are in a position to do that. Do you think it helps that you guys are playing on a familiar field? You play in Allegiant Stadium a lot. There's some familiarity there. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. I don't it's going to be minimal. I'll tell you what. The uh, Niners Nation and Niners Gang made me feel real, really at home out there in the Vegas, uh, Vegas Stadium yeah. last night. Big fans? <laughs> Booing me. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Felt right at home, baby. Hey. I loved it. You and me both. God, it fires me up, man. It's the best. It fires me up getting booed by the Bay Area. <laughs> I love it, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's talk a little 49ers defense. The 49ers have had one of the best defenses in the league over yeah. the last, I don't know, I mean, since Nick Bose has been there pretty much. Um, <laughs> Dude, I mean, really, before even before him. Patrick got, Willis was there. Before yeah, that, yeah, I mean, you got that whole uh, Vic Fangio, uh, yeah. Justin Smith, Patrick Willis, Bowman. I Patrick mean, Willis? What did I just say? Did I say Patrick Willis? Patrick Willis was there. I don't know. Nice. All right. I, Bowman. I, I don't know why I thought I said somebody else. Go ahead. Bowman was nice, too. By Alden Smith. I mean, their front seven was ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's, again, ridiculous. With Nick Bosa, Chase Young, Javon Hargrave. Shout out to my man, uh, Grave Digger. And Eric Armstead, who I think is a very underrated player. Um, not that he's not known. I just think he's very good. Yeah. Uh, what stands out about this unit most to you? Uh, they are big, strong, and very fast. It's a good combination. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, they play very well together, man. You watch them on film, they kind of get better as the game goes on um, as a unit. And uh, you could see in all their playoff games, they're finishing the game and the other team isn't. You know, they're doing a better job in certain specific situations in the second half uh, that's catapulting their team to win ball games right now. And uh, this yeah. defense, man, they fly around, and they're smart. Smart, they got, they have an idea, yep. got, and uh, on top of that, man, their backers can move. And yeah. when your backers are that athletic, you can do a lot of different stuff, man. No doubt, no doubt. They, th their linebackers fly around and cover the middle of the field, run sideline to sideline, yeah. and then their front is so dominant at getting penetration up the field. Yeah, they're really it's gonna good. It's going to be our biggest challenge, man. It's going to be our biggest challenge. Well, another challenge for you guys is uh, the tight end on the other side of the ball, Jorge. which is – Mr. George Kittle. That's right. We got an all time tight end matchup in the Super Bowl. The Big Yeti versus George Kittle. Uh, you've talked about Kittle being uh, the best in the league this year. Are you looking forward to facing him again in the Super Bowl? Hell yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? Last year, I got to go, go up against my brother and you. And this year, I get to go up against my tight end, you brother, G Kittle, man. There you go. That's my guy, man. Have you guys talked at all? Did you guys see each other at the. Uh, yeah, in between, uh, or whatever. yeah, the opening ceremony, we got yeah. to chat just a little bit while everybody else is getting interviewed. But 
there's so much chaos going on right yeah, there's there. There's a lot going on. Told them, tell the family I said what's up, and uh, good luck to everybody. Hope they enjoy the uh, the festivities and the game. And let's go make this one another legendary game, man. Let's go. Let's go. I think Take that's this a good thing, uh, give the people what they want, baby. Take it to new heights. All right now. <laughs> playing in your fourth Super Bowl. Uh, we've said this stat a lot, but it's impressive enough to keep repeating. You're playing in your fourth Super Bowl in five years. <laughs> uh, pretty crazy that you guys have been this dominant. As someone who has been on this stage so many times, how do you help young guys on the team who are first-timers prepare for this? Just try not to let the the madness of the media and the buildup uh, make this – game so big that it that it affects your play right i think i think it did a little bit my my first time in the what the fuck there's something in that sorry good continue that is fucking that's gnarly i'm not gonna lie it's pretty badass dude so what was i talking about uh how do you help young guys that are playing in their first year oh how do i help them um just be a a veteran like i've been all all year you know making things uh Kind of just click for them and help them uh, any way I can, and most of the time it's just reassurance that uh, that they know what they're doing and that they feel comfortable where they're at and they feel confident in what they're doing, nice. um, and that uh, you know don't let the madness of this whole media chaos yeah. that is the Super Bowl uh, build this up to get you distracted on what the task is and and uh, what your assignments are. Just stay focused on the on 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 what your job is. Um, how you can help out the guy next to you and just playing your tail off, man. It's it's the best message you can give a give a guy because um, I promise you, everybody's going to be excited for this one. Because you guys have now been to so many Super Bowls, some fans are stating or starting uh, to view you guys as villains. Do you feel that? I mean, just do you feel that you guys are kind of getting the Patriots syn- syndrome? There's no question that because you guys have been so successful that. People be hating. <laughs> all right now, don't be um, don't be hating. Don't be hating. <laughs> you don't feel like that's the case at all. I feel like I I hear the cheers more than I hear the the all right. fus. That's a good way to look at life. I think that's I mean the right way to view things. You could tell that the Niners uh, in the opening ceremony had the yeah, majority but that was a in fan the room. Base. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a fan base is one thing. It, of course, they're gonna view you guys as villains. They're playing you guys. Yeah, I'm just talking about NFL wise. I don't know. I guess this year's been a little bit different. Kind of been a mixture of both. I mean, you guys have been so good for so long. You're probably just standard. It is what it is. I feel like you guys villain. are a pretty likable team, though. I feel like, like we, there's try something and, we try different. and do it. We try and do it in a in a fun way, man. Andy is a hard guy to hate. There you go. Pat Mahomes. I feel like he's a hard guy to hate. Travis Kelsey. You can hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy can suck sometimes. It's a hard guy to hate. I, I don't know. I just feel like. I don't know. He, it was right there. You should have just, <laughs> nah, fucking, you should have just fucking floored it. I'll I'll say this, man. It's it's football, man. It comes with the territory, baby. Right. The more you win, the more teams don't want to see the consistent, uh, you know. Well, and you know, I feel like the more you win close games, people remember certain plays or things that didn't go their way, and they resent you guys for it. That's what I think happens. Yeah. Like, but it ain't your fault. And also, the more you win, the more teams you beat, the more fan bases dislike you. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. All right, cool. So we got to the bottom of that. Do you like being the villain? Uh, This is something Pat was asked uh, earlier this week. Yeah, I thought he had a great great response to it, man. As he always does. I can definitely sense it. I never felt like that because I've never been like that my entire life. I know the Patriots had that for a while. I'm hoping we do it in a different way with a little bit of more fun and personality with it. Uh, but as long as you keep winning, teams start to not like you. And I want to keep winning. So if that means some other teams and other fan bases aren't going to like me, I'll try to still have a smile on my face and not be a bad example. But I can be that villain for them if they need me to be. <laughs> that's, just, that's kind of just got me fired up right it here. It did. I, I kind of got goosebumps just reading it. I ran out. Um, my homes. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to answer that question. You got any final thoughts, Trev? Is this in any way... Are there more distractions? Let's talk about this. You're in Sin City. This yeah. ain't <laughs> we ain't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> well played. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Sin City. There are not only media distractions, distractions galore. Yeah. You guys actually aren't allowed in. No players in the game are allowed in casinos before the game. Yeah, you definitely can't gamble. You might be able to walk or walk through. I thought you guys weren't even allowed gamble. to step foot in a casino. 
Well, I mean, if there's a restaurant in a casino, we can go in that. I, I'm, I don't know if that's the case. I'm not going down the strip anytime All right, either until way, the game. So. Lots of distractions. There's a big television sphere that's 400 feet tall yeah, you can see right behind us, nice, I think. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know how tall it is, but it's pretty big. Yeah, is this different in any way this year? I feel like it's exciting, man. The first ever. I agree. Super Bowl in Las Vegas, Nevada, the biggest entertainment show like Dude, mecca in the world. It's built for this. It's literally <laughs> built for the biggest stages. Like I, I mean, I'm just excited to, to have this opportunity. You guys were in, I'm sorry, not to. I've been when you guys are in Tampa. I've been when you guys are in Miami. I've played in Minnesota, and then obviously played last year in Arizona. This is pretty fucking cool. This is nuts. <laughs> this <laughs> is insane. Lie. Like this is insane. I'm gonna go see you two tomorrow. I mean, I know you got a game to prepare for. I get it. this is gonna be a blast for all the people enjoying this motherfucker. <laughs> Honestly, it just makes me want to win it that much more, man. Yeah, it makes me want to be on the right side of this uh, of the history books. And uh, be able to say I won the first Vegas Super Bowl ever. Yeah, because I think the NFL is going to enjoy having this place as the home. Oh, for I think the this Super is gonna, this is the first of many. Yeah, this exactly. place is built to host events like this. That's what I'm saying. So I for it to be the first. I mean, just what we've been through as a team to get to this point, uh, to get back to the mountaintop that uh, that we desire that that expectation was set uh, the minute that we won it last year. It's just been, man, it's been a fun ride up to this point. Um, an exciting opportunity to win this Super Bowl. And, man, that's uh, just makes you want it more than ever, man. Love it. Love it. All righty. No, no questions. Super Bowl preview. That's right. All it's right, time to move on to our special Super Bowl edition of No Dumb Questions. It's officially our No Dumb Super Bowl preview. This No Dumb Super Bowl preview is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Yoo-hoo! We're about to actually time this. Let's go sports bar. We got time and we got time and come on now, baby. Just can't harm. All right. From J. We got to try that too while we're here. Not right now. We'll, we'll save it. Um, In the post. All right. All right go. Uh, JD <laughs> Francis on Twitter. No, no <laughs> questions. Will you guys lead the charge to finally move the Super Bowl to Saturday? Let us sleep in lead and sleep the it. charge. Let's just, let us sleep in and sleep it off instead of trying to go to work on Monday. No. Yeah, I'm out on this. No. Completely it's out. It's one day out of the year. All right? One, one day. Football is meant to be played and on Sundays. Yeah, there, there, right. are, uh, there are occasions where there is cool to see a Monday game. It's cool to see a Friday, Friday a Saturday, game. a Thursday, Thursday. But I think uh, the Super Bowl is meant to be played on Sunday. Yeah. If anything, uh, we need to make Monday a holiday. Yeah. Just make Monday a holiday. Yeah. Don't the, the 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 country should change what they're doing for the Super Bowl, not the Super Bowl for the country. Come on now, people. Come on now. It's football, baby. In Brazil, actually, I was in Brazil for the World Cup. Did you know whenever the Brazilian national soccer team plays, the entire country shuts down? It's a it's a national holiday whenever their soccer team plays. Yeah, it what might are only we be for America. Cup, but that's what I'm saying. Just make it a national holiday. It's a it's it's America's Sport, it's it's it surpassed our our national pastime of baseball, in my opinion. I'm right there with you. Right, yeah. I think uh, I think it needs Monday needs Super Bowl Monday. Should just be off. Yeah, I'm with it. Unless you work at any of the stores that I need to go to, then you should still work. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Chick Fil A, because yeah. you're off on Sunday. Unless you're necessary. If you were open during COVID, you still got to go to work. That's how it works. <laughs> Sorry, I don't make the rules. Rules are rules, America. <laughs> rules are you're rules. You're necessary. You got to get out there. <laughs> from at austin texas chief all right now with the super bowl being in vegas uh what are the top five movies all time that are set in las vegas Ooh. that's damn good that's a damn good question right there i think we both are gonna say the first one i'll let you say it i'm not even reading it i know where you're going three two one hangover. vegas vacation not oh my god i do love vegas vacation you though. said you love vegas vacation i, I do. thought that that's where you were going they, I, I hangover's always, great they're both good movies they're both so yeah. good i was a, so disappointed when i went to vegas for the first time and there was no like free cars to free win. cars to win. <laughs> like i i was just like where the fuck do i get a free hummer where are all these free cars god damn it what is that what's randy is the cut is the is the uncle what's the uh What's the son's name? I can't remember those movies. Rusty. Rusty. I knew it was an R. Fuck. Dennis Quaid is the best part of those movies. Chevy Chase is great too, but the brother. God man. damn, Randy's good. <laughs> yeah, Vegas Vacation, Hangover. Hangover. Those are both man. of my top five. 
Um, are you a big swingers guy? Vegas, baby. Vegas. <laughs> Dude, sw- I'm just a big Vince Vaughn. You're so money, you don't even know it. <laughs> Dude, Vince Vaughn is just an electric freaking oh, character. He's a legend. He's a legend. Him and John Favreau. Is that how you say it? Yes. I think so. And now it is. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have no idea. I love that. But movie. they are the absolute legends. They were in Four Christmases together, too. Four Christmases, the best rom-com of all time, The Breakup, which I don't think John Favreau's in, but Vince Vaughn's electric in that one. Anyways, Swingers, out, outstanding movie. What about, is, do you, would you consider Rush Hour? Was that in Vegas? Is that in Vegas? When they, when they had the casino? They have a casino in LA? At the time, they probably didn't. I would bet it, was, it would have been illegal to have a casino at the time. All right, yeah, it was Vegas, L.A. The L.A. Casino. All right. Well, Rush Hour's not in it, but nice try. Nice try. I see what you did there. You got to put Casino in there. Yeah. All right. Scorsese. Yeah. It's a classic. Yeah. It's a classic. You can throw it on right now Nero. and watch it. Yeah. You can put any of those. Casino, Goodfellas, Bronx Tale. I mean, you can't go wrong with anything in that category. Are you sure Rush Hour wasn't in Vegas? No, I'm not. I literally just was told this by intern Brandon. You sure? I'm not sure. Buttercream, buttercream. Maybe it's Rush Hour 2. <laughs> Which one is the one? Rush Hour 2 is the one where they're in the casino, right? No, where Rush he, Hour Where he jumps down the, the banner. Dude, that's Rush Hour 2. Scene. That's not Rush Hour 1. All right. Check Rush Hour 2. Is that in Vegas? It's in a casino. And I know there's no casinos in California. Not because I'm a degenerate and I looked, but. What about, ooh, uh, no, that's Los Angeles. I was thinking of Escape from Los Angeles. Here's the plot line for Rush Hour 2. It's vacation time for Detective James Carter. He finds himself alongside Detective Lee in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah. Well, they end up in Vegas, though. You know? Yeah. You're Hong Kong, the Vegas of Japan. I mean, you're you're. I'll I'll allow that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that was. Great. What else is a good Come Vegas on. movie, man? Fuck. I mean, technically, it was a British territory, I think, at the time, but that's. What do we? One more movie. All right, one more movie. Vegas is a British territory. <sighs> I ain't buying it. What is a? F- we're missing one. We're missing. It's right there. What? Is, okay, so we got Vegas Vacation, um, Hangover, Swingers, Casino, and I thought you already said Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, but there's one. There's, there's one, another one that we're missing. Which one is it? Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. Oh. Is that the name of that movie? Dodgeball. Does that take place in Vegas? You know what? I, I knew think, there was one, dude. That's definitely up there. I think well, we got to get a better one than that for dodgeball. Go fucking extend your arm. I mean, I'm a left, it's my left hand. I don't. Watch the elbow. Dude. <laughs> um, well, that's our top five. And there yes, we, we just <laughs> made dodgeball a Vegas movie. It's official. It's, de- it's, it's Vegas. Yeah. All right. Damn, this is it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah, we did it. You want to talk about anything else? Not really. I just want to drink out of my cool cup. <laughs> He's so proud of this. It's been a lot, long time. It has. Make- it has. There has been a lot of back and forths, and I felt bad for Kayla the entire time. You did. I didn't want anything to do with this. That's I could how tell bad I you felt. didn't answer any of the texts. That's a, I, I was no, like, it was, this it was is evident. It was evident. Ridiculous. You thought it was they really already stupid. work way too hard for this to be as good as it is, yep. and then you just poured on the most impossible fucking. But you're happy it looks with great. It, it looks great. <laughs> All righty, that about wraps up this episode of New Heights. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when all of the new episodes are coming out. And uh, we'll be back with our Super Bowl recap episode next week and uh, also the winner of our best team name bracket. Not right now. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Uh, how about that? And uh, brought to you by the all-new Experience Smart Money Debit Card. The debit card that builds credit without the dead. Get you one, dog. And uh, the show is on all social media, at New Heights Show with one S, so follow. Uh, and please, thanks to our production uh, for this amazing golden baby and making us sound and look way better than what we are. And um, thank you to the 92 percenters. Tell us what we should name this thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for tuning in and uh we'll see you guys after the biggest game in the world should i just like walk around the strip with this thing and yeah right yeah you should give the people a glimpse maybe even a taste nice way to end it